Okay, let's do a stereoscopic supercell. Here we go. We have two of them of various uh, different opacities. And let's place on a ring magnet first on our first supercell. Here we go. And let's sandwich our second supercell over top of that. The second one is uh, more opaque. It takes longer for the image to develop. Let me zoom in here. You can actually see a ring of light along the plane of inertia that makes both out both the outside and the inside of the neodymium iron boron a ring magnet. And uh, if you actually, you, I can't show it to you with any camera, you can get an idea. If you actually look down and peer into the center, as I actually tilt the uh, camera around, there is at the center, of course this is a convergent and divergent centrifugal and centripetal magnetism. We have constructive interference and destructive interference since light is a coaxial circuit. It's no different than the double slit experiment where we actually have banding, but in this case, the banding is curved linear, convergent and divergent. It would be like a funnel. I don't know if you've ever dropped a coin down one of those funnels and it spins around. Well, imagine a two-way funnel where the uh, enormous amount of coins, in this case, there are no coins. We're talking about fields. Enormous amount of coins are funneling down to the centripetal, and we have an enormous amount of coins going against that, like one set of traffic going against the other, and uh, they eliminate each other out in this constructive and destructive interference. In the center, there's a little Earth-like sphere, and at the center of that is uh, completely black. Not black at the center, like where you think you're seeing it here at the tip of the globe or sphere at the center of the ring magnet, but at the actually dead, dead center. This is the point where no light is seen, and of course if I zoom in, you can actually see that it looks black right at the center. Well, not extremely black, not from this perspective with the, uh, the light, if you currently see it, but if you actually had it right up your face, you'd see it. So let's actually take that off. Okay, this is the conjugate geometry of magnetism and dielectricity. There's not such thing as magnetic attraction, by the way. Magnetic attraction is a misnomer. Every magnet has pressure zones of centrifugal, which is true magnetism, and centripetal, which is increasing inertia or dielectricity. Here we placed along the pole, so to say, our uh, cube magnet, the three quarter inch neodymium iron boron uh, N50 gauss, and we'll place on top of that our second supercell. Hopefully it'll all sit there. And have I got it lined up perfectly? Uh, kind of perfectly. It's hard. Hold on a second. There we go. It's hard to balance these right on top of each other. Pardon me for that one. Let me scoot back. There we go. The power cord is actually yanking on it. Oop! It's not tough. Maybe I should have used super glue or something, right? Yeah, there we go. Someone's going to complain. I'm like, oh, you should have prepared for this ahead of time. Well, let me just hold it. There we go. And here you can actually see... If you look closely on the top of the pole of the cube magnet, you'll actually see a bowl shape. If you actually had this in your hand or were looking around it. Now, the layer on this is, uh, is only a few microns in the actual uh, supercell uh, ferrofluidic uh, solution, which is a dilution of one drop ferrofluid to two drops mouse milk. Yes, it's actually called mouse milk. It's a... Uh, a uh, old thing used on aircrafts. It's basically like WD-40, but different, and they actually call it mouse milk. I know. You could use different formulations, but mouse milk works best. Here you can actually see the bulb, bowl of formation at the pole of the magnet by sandwiching these two supercells together. And here, of course, you could see the uh, convergent and divergent uh, constructive and destructive interference. Let me actually zoom in a little bit. I actually place the magnet over here so I actually have less torsion on the power cord. There we go. Less torsion on the power cord. Let's zoom in. There we go. You see? Now, you think you're actually seeing a black bowl right here at the, uh, the top of the magnet. And it looks like a bowl formation, even as you get down on it. But there's nothing there. This is better than the best hologram on Earth, and I can guarantee you 99.999% of you have never seen a true art hologram. That hologram on your credit card is like 1 100th one as good as a real art hologram, and this is a far, far, far better than that. Especially if you have it in your hands. Now, if you look closely, 
you see the crossing intersecting lines of convergent um, and divergent uh, lines of the light as the centrifugal um, and centripetal pressure zones. The conjugate geometry of this is the uh, hyperboloid and the toroid. The toroid is the uh, field geometry of magnetic divergence. The uh, hyperboloid, or the hourglass shape, which is the inverse image of the uh, toroid, forms the uh, conjugate centripetal convergence of, uh, of uh, increasing inertia and dielectricity. That's why the center of this magnet looks completely black. It gets darker and darker, and then it just gets black. This is uh, about the... It's almost like... Someone should market this and call it uh, the tabletop uh, black hole. Ultimately, in an extremely small scale, since we're talking about a point source or a coherent fields working together in an incommensurable fashion, that is actually what we have here in simplex. But you actually see the bowl? Don't be blinded by the light. It just looks like there's a black bowl sitting on the top of the magnet. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you do, click the link below. And uh, you can actually see how it lifts up off of there. And we're, we're talking about you're looking at a viewing film that's uh, only a few microns thin, but we have this amazing holographic geometry. And that is solely due to the light's interaction with the uh, field coherency that defines the magnet itself and the interplay of the dielectric and the magnetic. A magnet is not purely magnetic. Actually, it is mostly dielectric. What amazes people is not actually magnetic attraction, which does not exist, rather dielectric acceleration. The true magnetism is right here. This is important. The only true magnetism is at the periphery here. Everything right here is increasing dielectric. And uh, you can actually measure that. It's palpable with a Gauss meter, a uh, magnetometer. So thank you so much for watching. Click the link below if you like these videos or join my Patreon and goodbye.